I can end my days in the peace of the Lord. After Jesus' baptism, he moved to Capernaum on the shore of the lake, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali. So was the prophecy of Isaiah fulfilled. On the way of the sea, on the far side of Jordan, the people that walked in the darkness have seen a great light. On those who live in a land of deep shadow, a light has shone. Jesus repeats to all he passes, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. People listen to him and believe in him. Jesus is compassionate with all. He heals every type of illness and infirmity. Epileptics, the paralyzed, the possessed, the lepers. Jesus heals them all. People begin to talk about Jesus, and many are convinced that he is the long-awaited Messiah of the Israelites. The king, Herod Antipas, begins to fear Jesus, as he did John the Baptist. John, in fact, had said, someone is following me, someone who is more powerful than I am. He will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand. He will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn. But the chaff he will burn in a fire that will never go out. What's Herod having for breakfast? Goat's milk, fruit, dates. Oh, far too wishy-washy for a king. I used to be the cook for his father, Herod the Great. Now there was a mighty king for you. That was 30 years ago. I wasn't around then. But I was. And as soon as he was awake, he had it. He used to eat roast goat's sweetbreads sprinkled with parsley, washed down with red wine. Oh, oh! <laughs> what do you think you're doing? Well, it was ready anyway.
wild honey and locusts. A meal fit for a king. John, look over there. They come from all over Israel. They are merely responding to the voice of God. journey to the Jordan Springs has not been in vain. Cleanse yourselves of your sins, Israelites, for the kingdom of God is at hand, and I will repeat this message to you every single day as long as I have a voice. Hey, prophet, if Herod came to you, would you baptize him as well? Are you capable of washing his sins away too? You tell us to repent, but what about him, his wife, his servants? They are a disgrace to us. No, he won't be coming to ask for a baptism of forgiveness. He's blinded by his sins, as are all those who live with him. They live in the lap of luxury, dressed in purple, and what they eat in a day, another person would eat in a week. And they all follow the example of the king who married that depraved woman who'd been his brother's wife. Herod is powerful. Herod is rich. Herod does not fear God. But he who will come after me is more powerful than Herod. He's more powerful than everyone. He will gather the wheat into the granary and burn the chaff with eternal fire. And Herod will also be burned. So will his sins and the sins of his family and of his servants. Let's go, I've heard enough. See Herod. Let him pass. But John the Baptist is not a criminal. So you have no intention of protecting my good name. Herodias, dearest wife, the peace of the province is more important than anything else. I heard him, sir, with my own ears. He promised that you and all your family, and your wife as well, would be burnt. Did you hear that? He promised we would be burnt! The people are restless. The poor are on the increase, and this hothead is promising them a messiah. What nonsense! We have to make an example of him. We could have John taken to some remote place, like the fortress of Maturante on the other side of the Dead Sea. What could be better than a nice, calm, organized province in order to keep our friends, the Romans, happy? The Romans? Oh, yes, of course. We mustn't upset the Romans at any cost. They have been so very generous with me and my family. What do you mean? You're just going to lock him up and leave it at that? Yes, that's right. And I don't want to hear another word on that matter. I want no harm to come to John. He may be a prophet. He might be irritating. But he is not a criminal.
Make way, you good for nothing. Make way. John, have you finished talking about Herod's sins? Here we are, at last. I've brought you John the Baptist. Herod wants you to treat him well. What about that rabble tagging along behind you? They are the Baptist disciples. They refuse to leave his side. Fine. Take the prisoner to his cell. You can make your camp here, but don't expect us to feed you. If you like, I can give you water. Come along, brothers. Let's keep our spirits up. all she had left. Don't cry. Listen to me, child. Get up. Mother, what happened? A great prophet is among us today. What has come to us? John said he has prepared the way, and now Jesus is coming. He touched the child's forehead, and the child came back to life. We have the reply. Let's go. Well, did you ask him if he is the one who is to come, the Messiah? Or do we have to wait for another? Yes, we asked him. And what was his reply? Jesus said to us, tell John what you see and hear. The blind can see, the lame can walk, lepers are healed of their sores, and the poor have been given the good news. He replied, using the words of Isaiah. He replied, so he is the Messiah. And I, I am not worthy of untying his sandal straps. A high class banquet. Uh, distinguished guest, Jeremiah, important people. His father didn't give all these grand receptions. Times change, old man, and your king didn't have a wife like this, Herod. Or a daughter like me. And will the person...
Persian ambassador is also be coming. Of course, my darling. Herod has also invited the Persian delegation on their return from Egypt. I've heard that they have gorgeous clothes and there is a beautiful young man with them. Oh, yes. He's a prince, a blood relative of the king of Persia. Oh, mother. Just think if he fell in love with me. I wouldn't be surprised if he did. I made you as beautiful as the sun, my darling. Wait until Herod's feast. They'll all see how beautiful you are. <laughs> and I'll become Queen of Persia. But first you must make the request to Herod, as you promised me. <laughs> Is it so important to you? Don't worry, I'll ask him. Dance worthy of a king. Friends, the grace and talent of this young girl lights up my palace like a ray of sunshine on this feast day. And because Herod is great, he will be fittingly generous with this beautiful young girl, daughter of my much loved consort. Divine Salome, Whatever you ask for, I shall grant. Be it half of my kingdom. Powerful men like their women, cruel. Well, Salome, what do you want from me? Gold from Scythia, silk from the Orient, jewels from Ethiopia? Just say the word, my girl. Anything you want. I want the head of John the Baptist. <gasps> On a silver platter. <gasps> but John is a good man. He's only a prophet. It would not be wise to break one's word particularly in front of the Romans. Well, why should you care about him? Don't you remember? He promised that the hand of God would burn you like a dry branch. Very well. If that is the gift you desire. <laughs> <laughs>
Go away. There's nothing more you can do for it. Huh? No! His voice will continue to cry out. A voice crying in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. John the Baptist was witness to Jesus. What does witness mean? A witness is a man who in the presence of the people, the judges and other persons concerned, truthfully and publicly says what he knows about a fact or a person, thereby committing his own word and if necessary, his own life to publicly guarantee what he says. John had started traveling on the roads of Palestine in about the year 30 during the empire of Tiberius, announcing the Messiah's early arrival, the man awaited by the people of Israel, the savior, the liberator. His preachings caused at that time a growing movement by the people who worshiped him as the new prophet, which started to worry Herod Antipas the king. What could a powerful man such as Herod Antipas, a friend of the Romans who were then the rulers of Palestine, fear from a poor man like John, who had no worldly power. Herod feared his words. In fact, not only did John announce the imminent coming of a Messiah, urging the Israelites to be baptized in order to wash away their sins, but he told them that Herod did not respect Moses' law, and that he was a public sinner, a man who refused the word of God and that he was a bad example for his subjects. Herod also feared that the Romans, taking into account the poor reputation he enjoyed among the Israelites, would dismiss him and hand over the kingdom to a man more welcome to the Israelites and the priests of the temple. When John started preaching the word of God, Herod the Great had already been dead many years and the Romans assigned the land of Palestine and its reign to his three sons, who divided it into three parts, also for the purpose of better ensuring their political and economic control. Of the three brothers, only Herod Antipas was to reign for a long time. Archelaus was soon removed by the Romans because of his cruelty after a few years' reign and a Roman procurator was put in his place. Regarding Herod Philippus, vague notions are reported by the Gospels. It is only mentioned that his wife, Herodides, had forsaken him to go and live, together with her daughter Salome, with her brother Herod Antipas, who had in turn left his wife by the name of Aretha. John rebuked Herod Antipas especially for his scandalous marriage. In his heart, King Herod knew that he deserved John's scoldings, and he probably would have let him live. But Herodiades was not ready to share Herod's generosity. She therefore convinced Herod to have John beheaded. <laughs> 